Alrighty, this is um, part two of our electric outboard um, project. So our speed controller and servo tester turned up today. Um, so that's just a uh, 30 amp speed controller available off eBay. 12 bucks I think they are, something like that. And um, that is just what they call a servo tester um, for testing the servos of your RC vehicles. So um, that also turned up. In fact, I ordered one and I had three of them turn up. So I uh, don't know what happened there. But anyway, now we start the painstaking task of rewinding our uh, stator. So um, because these are designed to run on 240 volts here, we have to wind it right down to 12 volts. Um, so every phase, um, three phase of course, so every phase is series connected on each pole of each phase, which makes the resistance way too high um, and we'd never get any current flow that will make this uh, run with the resistance so high. So what we have to do is cut all the wires and we take first three coils um, so that's one phase, two phase, three phase, or the first, second and third phase uh, and we join the starts, or the ends I have in this case so each end of each coil is all joined together like these ones here and these ones here and then the start of each coil you just fold over the edge and then we have to um, parallel connect each coil on each phase so phase one all the coils will be paralleled phase two all the coils will be paralleled and phase three all the coils will be paralleled so it's um, star configuration uh, so just to go over that again you just snip your wire in the middle um, of the first and the fourth coil because they will be the same phase snip it in the middle second and fifth coil snip it in the middle third and sixth coil snip it in the middle that'll give you enough wire to bring the end of each coil together and solder together that's not soldered to anything else just soldered like that and also give you enough to push the start wire of each coil over so you can parallel connect your three phases um, and this is the wiring diagram that we end up with looks like I've started to run out of ink but anyway um, you can see how it works. So phase one, phase two, and phase three, the ends are all joined together, and then the starts of each coil on each phase. So phase one will go to this ring here, they're all parallel connected. Phase two to the second ring, the blue's changed to pink because we've run out of ink. And then phase three is this purple one here, or pink here as well um, is all parallel connected and then they simply go out to your speed controller here which is these three wires so um, hopefully that's uh, dropped the resistance right down to imitate that of a um, brushless RC motor where the resistance is extremely low um, don't be too worried, you won't be putting enough current through it to uh, blow the uh, speed controller on 12 volts so um, that's where we're at at the moment that's what we have to do I will come back um, once I've finished doing this probably a couple hours work in this and uh, we'll have a look at the end product okay well we had an early morning start managed to get uh, one phase done last night and then called it quits now have the other two phases all wired up in parallel. Um, 
just a bit of hot glue holding everything in place and over the uh, solder joints. So um, we'll put it all back together, see if it works, and then if it does, we'll pretty all this up um, using some uh, body filler. Make a nice tapered um, seal, if you like, all the way around. Make it look pretty. So, uh, but first, we're going to put it together and see if it actually works. Okay, so um, we'll wire it up. Just running off one of these 12 volt batteries. A little speed controller there is all fired up, ready to go. 40 milliamp standby current, so not too bad. Uh, and we'll give her a spin up. That's flat out. There you go. Very low RPM, which means we're going to need a very large propeller. But um, that motor has a lot of torque. So, uh, probably be ideal for a uh, push bike or a go kart. Um, but we're going to keep on with the outboard plan. So, um, in our next video, we're going to make some brackets off of this and cut out a plate to bolt on the leg of the outboard. We have to take our uh, splined bit of shaft and marry it up to this shaft here. I'm going to leave that on there and a bit of shaft. If it's not successful as an outboard um, it's going to be put into a uh, little electric go-kart. We could whip some up, something up pretty quick. But uh, motor runs fine bit of wobble in the um, rotor there but that's uh, easy fixed 24 volts no problem um, unloaded current that flat out is 2.1 amps so um, the little water snake I have that we're going to put this up against the uh, water snake electric outboard uh, that drill draws 3.6 amps without any load on it so um, who knows we'll see how we go but um, we're going to have to have an awfully big propeller on the um, outboard because of the uh, very low RPM this has and it still has to go through the uh, reduction box or the gearbox of the um, outboard leg that's about a 1 to 1.8 reduction as well so it's going to be spinning even slower so um, the propeller size is going to be a bit of um, messing around I think. We may have to uh, weld some nice big um, prop blades on the propeller to get this thing to actually do anything in the way of uh, giving us any thrust to push our little boat along. So, uh, but anyway we'll continue on. Fun project. So, uh, motor runs fine, no problem there. It's a little tricky to start. Sometimes it um, won't get up to the correct speed and then the uh, speed controller cuts out. Um, you'll see when I started it, started spinning slowly and then without me turning the uh, potentiometer, it sped up by itself. So that's when it grabbed the uh, right frequency. So I'd say at the start it was running at a um, division of that frequency and uh, once it uh, grabbed the right frequency it sped up by itself anyway um, we could get um, a little better speed controller and um, one where you can adjust the frequency um, higher which would bring the RPM up even further but uh, with this generic one here, uh, it's a bit hard to do without the um, little computer. You need to uh, get in there and adjust the frequency. I know it does has two frequency settings, and I would say it's set on the low one at the moment. But in order to switch it up to the higher one, we would need the uh, controller to do that. 
which we don't have, we simply have a little servo tester. Um, but nonetheless, we'll uh, keep on soldiering on and see what we end up with. So that's it for this video. The next one, uh, we're going to be mounting it onto the trunk and um, see how we go with um, gearbox rotation speed, which is going to uh, determine the size of the uh, prop we need to make for it. And there's a propeller on it, so um, we might be able to do a bit of alley welding and uh, put some bigger blades on it, maybe. Alright guys, thanks for watching. So far, so good. I'm going to go ahead and um, seal this wiring properly now, make it look a little neater and better. And um, in the next video, like I said, we'll uh, mount it onto the uh, trunk of the outboard.